Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including a Miraculous Ladybug, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stovall. Hey, y'all. And April Collins. Hi there. We're finally here to talk Cat Blank, Shot Blanc. Did you uh, really just say Cat Blank? Really? Cat Blank. They, in the dub, they like... <laughs> It's, it's like, like say cat. I think they say cat blanc in the. I don't know. Um, but uh, you know he's not chat in English, but uh, we call him cat. So um, I call him chat. I feel like he's. I feel like he, maybe you do call him chat on the podcast. I don't know. Uh, anyway, the word, this is the one of the most hype episodes of Ladybug ever, and it finally aired a few days ago in Switzerland in French, and then today the English dub came out. Um, we, uh, I bl- believe before the podcast, Eleni April said they only watched the French version. I watched that originally, and uh, today I watched the English dub, so we can c- compare notes on that, I guess. Uh, but uh, c- 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 go watch Cop- Chat Blank Blanc, and then come back and listen to this podcast. Spoilers for that and all previous episodes of Miraculous Day. But um, I'm going to say let's try to not spoil the finale, I guess, in case someone hasn't watched. Um, if you want to vaguely hint at it, that's fine. But um, it really is supposed to come before the finale, so whatever. Um, so it's really unrelated, so it shouldn't come yeah, up. Yeah, I don't think, I don't really It shouldn't think come up. Yeah, but we're going to do don't. no spoilers for the finale, spoilers for all the episodes of Miraculous Ladybug. Find us at OverlyAnimated.com. Search for Ladybug, um, Overly Animated on your podcast app, or our, we're on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Overly Animated. Okay. Uh, Delaney, huge episode of Ladybug. Um, very trolly to you, I think. So what did yes. you think of this episode? Oh my god, this this episode hurt me. I had to keep pausing it. Like Are you like able? literally Yes, like the first <laughs> oh my god, the first like minute I was like, What are you doing? I had to pause it. And Tania said she could hear me yelling while I was watching the episode. <laughs> I was upstairs and I was like, Ah Oh my I don't even like where to even begin with this episode. Like, oh my so like what? So like, I don't I don't even know. We're we're just gonna talk about it because this episode gets like bananas. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll get I it. think it's good. I don't. It's hard. Okay. The problem is with Ladybug. It's like when they do crazy episodes like this. It's like okay, yeah, it was really great and I enjoyed it, but it's also like I'm more like going, oh my god, the whole time. So it's hard to like be like, was it a good episode or am I just shook? <laughs> Yeah, so you have more of a reaction to it than you're sure uh, about its yeah, quality. Yeah, like I'm like super shook about it. Like I think for I think like narratively it's an interesting episode, like structure wise. Anything else though? I mean, I mean visually it's like interesting, but they also kind of did a bad job. <laughs> but oh, still, interesting. Like, okay. I don't know. We'll talk about it. Yes. Okay. So uh, Delaney shook April. How did you react to this episode? Okay, this episode is a huge troll and. <laughs> Like, I should have known immediately whenever, like, she, M- Meredith goes back to her friends and her hair is down. And I was, and, and I even sat there and was like, what happened to her hair? <laughs> so, um, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we got to spend some time in the Dead Wife Garden. That was kind of nice. Oh, yeah, the Dead Wife Garden. Was very, nice. very so, prominent this episode. It, start, yeah. it just started in the Dead Wife Garden. Yeah. I don't know Gabriel if that's top Gabriel. of the, It's not really top of the list here, April, but uh, oh, you do. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, we have April, the only Hawk Moth stand. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, believe me, April's uh, Hawk Moth standing is going to come into play in this episode for sure. Oh, man. I'm so pumped. It's going to be great. Okay, good. Uh, but, yeah, like, this episode was... it it was a lot and I like I made the mistake of like watching it really late at night and I like the lady kept pausing it and having freakouts and so I didn't go to bed until super late because of it because I I, again this was one of those episodes that took me like a very long time to get through (laughs) when it takes you an hour to watch a 22 minute episode yep pretty much (laughs) April, I feel like uh, you've often said I made the mistake of watching Ladybug blank. And so, like, is there a right time to watch Ladybug? Because I no, feel like there's you- <laughs> never a right time. Maybe, like, early in the morning, like, on a day where you are you don't have to go to work, you yeah. don't have plans. Oh, like, I did that, and it still, like, was bad. So, <laughs> you're, hang- like, uh, you're hanging out in your jam jams, like. Yeah, this is me. <laughs> like, like, Sunday, 10 a.m. when you have no plans. Yeah, like okay. brunch got canceled. That's, You're that's, totally okay with that. <laughs> you have to be okay with that. I'm bad. That's the, 
<laughs> that's that. Okay, that's the only time to watch Ladybug Noted. <laughs> How, so, what, what time did you go to bed after watching this episode, April? It was like eleven. Okay, oh, it's so not that late. I mean, it's late on like when you got to work, but it's not like well, yeah, well, because I had to get up early. Like, okay. I had to get up at five in the morning. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gross. Okay. Yeah, see, that's why it's, that's why it was late it was way okay. past now, my now it seems late okay, okay. Yeah, it's very late. i sleep that if i oh it's bad if i stay up that late um okay so we won't keep delaney up too late with this podcast <laughs> yeah, <please> don't. <laughs> i don't have work tomorrow so it's fine that's good well you do we do have another podcast so the more podcasts um pre- pre- preview for felix who, who knows what that's about uh okay i've spent several days trying to understand if cat blank <laughs> is a good episode uh <laughs> It's really it's hard. It's really it is. I I agree. It's really hard to tell. So it's it's just not helped because we like watching and I, I, I'm souring to watching Ladybug in non ideal conditions. As we said with April, no ideal time. But um, Miraculous Subs like not performing anymore is like a uh, really is really hurt our experience because I think I'm out on all non Miraculous Subs uh, translations. Um, because uh, re- I, like I watched the dub today, the, th- the third my third viewing of this episode, and it really helped because everything's a lot more coherent. This is just an episode with a lot of stuff in it, so um, I think like Ladybug might be one of those shows that actually is very beneficial to watch dubbed into your native language. Like just it's it's just very fast paced, and it's um, important for emotional beats to end to understand what's going on. So I do think this episode works a lot more for me. I think it's good. Um, I think it might be very good. I think I'm maybe out on it being like uh, one of the best episodes just because it doesn't give its emotional beats enough room to breathe. I think that's my no, biggest it's criticism. Crazy. Yeah. Like they're dating and then they break up and then you're like, he destroyed the world. That's the whole episode, guys. That's it. Right. And, then, and, 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 and like I, the, for those decisions to like speed through them dating, like that's it, it makes sense with the narrative structure of the episode. And also um, because they would troll us. Yeah, yeah. Well, the whole episode is is for Delaney. And uh, it's it's it makes like I understand everything with what we're doing. And there's elements to like how this episode's constructed that I really love. The issue is that um, emotionally, it's you don't have room to breathe at any point this episode. So I feel like I'm like wowed by the ambition with this episode, and um, I, I personally love the future futuristic setting, this um, post-apocalyptic Paris. And you know it's post-apocalyptic because the Eiffel Tower has fallen down. Um, it's true, exactly. That's, it's <laughs> that's true. how you know. Um, and and the the white uh, hue to everything, um, and uh, the basic concept the episode is they flash back and forth between. Um, Cop Blanc and uh, Ladybug fighting in post-apocalyptic Paris and then Bunnix viewing how they got to that point in flashbacks. Love that. Love everything about how this episode's constructed. Um, it, it's... Uh, I, so I, I like I like it on a high level. I like I do think it's a good episode. I think it like didn't quite get there emotionally, um, but like it's still definitely one of the biggest episodes of Ladybug. And uh, I think like this is an all time classic. And like there's certain episodes which you know fans are going to be talking about forever. I talked about this with Oblivio. This episode's very similar to Oblivio in a lot of ways. I think it's this and Oblivio are probably the two most memorable episodes from the season uh, for. Fan, for certain types of fans, for us it's like Star Train, Chris Master, you know. But uh, that's all for. I do. I really did enjoy Oblivio. Um, and I think a big question is like, what works better, Oblivio or this episode? I think for me, people love Oblivio. I was slightly less high in it. I think this and Oblivio are similar to me. I think they both. That's fair. Yeah. I, yeah. So um, because they're trolling you the whole time. They're both very trolly. Um, and one of my initial reactions this episode was like, uh, "Oh, this means they're never going to do an, a real identity reveal because we yeah. saw exactly what would happen." Um, and I think that's still somewhat true, but I, there's a counter arguments I've gotten against that. Well, um, it's 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 weird because like at the end, Marinette's like. Oh, Adrian must have told somebody, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, that's not what happened. He kept the secret. It's just that he turned into Cat Noir to save her. And that's, I think, really is going to be the issue. It's not that they reveal, but the, you know, er they always get into it. Like, you know, if we can't be a good team if we have feelings for each other because we'll sacrifice, you know, Paris for each other. Yeah, so uh, th- we can t- start with the identity reveal here because you know uh, Adrian learns who Marinette is right right away. In that I episode. was so mad. I was like, Marinette, you're an idiot. What are you doing? <laughs> oh Isn't it God. also like how hasn't this happened already? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, so my my thought was 
oh, like, there's no way he actually believes himself because there's been way more, like, obvious evidence that Marinette is well, Ladybug, when, and he's just been like, oh, sh- she's just a really big fan. Well, yeah. it's like or, Cloudy Buster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he he, and he easily believes the the, the correct course correction in that episode. Um, but uh, here, uh, he's not talked out of it by Plag. He's uh, <laughs> Plag doesn't even try. Like he's like, Plag's oh, like, no. eh, yeah, Very, eh, that's a normal girl. Like, shut up, Plag. Adrian, Adrian says, <laughs> or because Ladybug and Marinette are the same person. Yeah, wow, so that's all it takes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's, it's you know, this is the moment we've always dreamed of. But it is interesting that it's just from Adrian's perspective. And it also kind of answers this big question we've been talking about since, I think, Kwame Buster of, like, why can't they know who, what each other's identities are? Is there magic behind it? And I think this episode gives you the answer. There's not, like, a magic spell. It's just that this is what happens, Bad I guess. News bears. This is like <laughs> Yeah. But, like, this isn't what would inevitably happen no matter what, I feel like, you know. I feel like there's a way this could happen and it wouldn't be like this. I don't, like, I, I, do you guys agree? I didn't see, I didn't read that there was a spell behind it or anything. Like, this isn't necessarily yeah. inevitable. Well, and, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, but, but, April, isn't it uh, really, as they say in the episode, Hawk Moth's fault that uh, it, it turns sour. Um, without without hockey, they would have been happy together and figured it out. I mean, yeah, maybe, but I feel like I guess in a perfect world they could have. And but if Hawk Moth didn't exist, but also like if Hawk Moth wasn't there, then there would be no reason for them to be like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ladybug and Cat. So uh, yeah. yeah, sure, in a perfect well, because the other thing too is whenever you lose your mirac or you like are stripped of your miraculous or you like lose the memory of that time. So, or of being the miraculous holders. Um, that's a good thought. Uh, is, is that true? I think it's, that's true of being the master. Um, right. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I yet. guess that makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, but, they, they give people uh, miraculous and take right them now. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> Marinette is the master, so we'll see how that works. But uh, yeah, it, I think that's when the master title is revoked. I think it would be reasonable if, if that applied to all of them. But we keep, we're giving and taking miraculouses, and it's been fine. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is like uh, Delaney. Is this is this a version of the identity reveal you ever imagined, where Adrian finds out he keeps it to himself? They start they start dating in real life. Marinette never finds out. No, because Adri- like out of the two of them, Marinette's much more competent, so I never expected him to be the one to figure it out. To be fair, she handed it to him like on a plate. So like, <laughs> like neither of them would figure it out. Uh, right, so. exactly, because they're both so dumb. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely this was definitely like a shock. Like like when she does it, like it's not. It, that was the thing too. Is like I know how this show works, and I was like, this is fine. Well, obviously, obviously, I was freaking out because this is a bad idea. And then when, but then when it's actually like real, like for real, he figures it out. I was like, "Oh, what are we doing?" So I like it was. I do think it was like a really good setup, and I enjoyed watching it. Like it's it's funny, and then uh, everything with Bunnix is like the best. Yeah, Bunnix is a big part of this episode too. She shows up. She's like, "What have you done? You messed everything up. You ruined everything." I guess we always just have Bunnix here to solve. Like, I guess, is Bunnix just going to prevent an identity reveal from ever happening? She's going to be too afraid of this happening again. So, um, like, doesn't this mean it'll never happen? Well, I mean, I mean, this look, we also talk about like different scenarios. So in this scenario, Adrian figured it out, and Marinette doesn't know he knows. So, and does, that this, does this mean they both need to know at the same time? Maybe, I don't know, because, well, this is the kind of thing, too, like, it's interesting, because, like, maybe if Marinette knew Adrian was Cat Noir, she wouldn't have bent to Gabriel's will as easily, knowing that he, like, does get out, and he, like, which was funny, it was really funny when she made, so why is his door, why is his window always open? <laughs> like, that was funny. Yeah, and I guess, I guess we do get the, the state of them both knowing, but it's for, like, uh... Not seconds. that long, Some right? Moment. I, I, yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. Does he know that? I don't know. Does she ever find out that he's Adrian? Yeah, she sees yes. him transform. Yeah, to, and then it's it is it gets confusing. She sees him transform when he goes to 
uh, kill the Akuma when it's a, when the Hawkmoth sends it after her, and then everyone knows that he's Cat. Oh yeah, that's in that's in the flashbacks. The, yeah, the flashback. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, and it, then that's you know it's different Marinette. That's a different Marinette from our Marinette, mm-hmm. and our Marinette never sees Bunnix watching those flashbacks, so our right. Marinette never figures it out. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very confusing. Um, it was it was very confusing to watch. But it was, I guess, the moment, the one moment we get is um, her just, like, uh, going into Kat's arms after she figures it out after that emotional moment they have um, of, like, them both knowing who each other is. And then they, um, we have, like, the standoff with Hawk Moth after, and he akumatizes Adrian, and they're, like, both okay, trying Natalie's to pull at him. Okay, Natalie's standing at the window, like, with her mouth open. <laughs> On the and then she's like, your son, it's Cat Noir. Like, I was like, what? Like, what do you think of Natalie watching? Yeah, what's, what's. It was so wow, creeper. Funny. Like, yeah, wow, creeper. <laughs> one. Number two, it was so funny. Like, she's just like, just, her just jaw just drops. Like, she's like, uh. And she like thinks for a moment. Like, she's like, should I tell him this? <laughs> and then he didn't react the way I thought he would. Like, like, I feel like this, this timeline gives a lot of credit to Hawk Moth. Like, he becomes uber competent immediately. <laughs> the, so people are reacting to Hawk Moth in this episode. We'll talk about that. Uh, let's, let's focus on Adrian Marinette, and then we're going to spend a long time on Hawk Moth. So, uh, I assume. Um, yeah, so we see them dating. Dating. We see them dating. We see these, uh, like, like, snapshots, I guess. Like, um, they're dancing. So Adrian confesses to Marinette after learning she's Ladybug. This is, I guess this is what we think would happen in this scenario, is like, oh, yeah, sure. Once those... Um, once yeah. for him, those two converge, it's pretty easy that he'd want to be with her. Um, and uh, it means that I love you. And then they kiss and um, they're, they're, they're dating. They hug in front of the school. Chloe's mad. Um, they're dancing. Uh, they eat ice cream together. And there's like a news broadcast of uh, Marinette's Adrian's new girlfriend. Um, and uh, yes. Super cute. Yeah. And her hair's down mm-hmm. the whole time. I guess that's yes. how you differentiate them. Um, That's how you know it's a fake reality. <laughs> right? Shows do this all the time, yeah. Uh, Should have known. <laughs> so, I don't know. This is, like, an interesting version of, like, oh, we're going to see Marinette and Adrian dating. Like, in Oblivio, we saw them together, but it's, like, different versions of themselves. This is, like, just an alternate version of where we already are. So, it's, like, more real. Um, but, at the sa- but at the same time, I think this was, like, not what a lot most people imagine this is like because this is like adrian knows and marinette doesn't know and that creates an interesting dynamic um with that um so i guess we could get other versions of this with the other combinations of fake futures i don't know if we're going to repeat the concept but um, the square we can do the square do, just do a cat blanc episodes of every version of the square yeah um yeah. <laughs> like i guess if it were to happen that we you know there could be marinette knowing adrian not knowing or them both knowing um, or them both not knowing. So we got one. Yeah, we got one of it. One version of it. Um, yeah, April. What? Any? Were you feeling them dating? Um, what did you react to more with them together? This or Oblivio? Mm, oh, I feel like Oblivio. Yeah, I think not they're... that. Not that I didn't react to this, just because like I love that like this one like we touch on all of like these like moments that Marinette tried to have with like Adrian in the past like eating ice cream and like I mean they've danced before and everything but like um <clears throat> but then like the news story of her actually being his girlfriend versus them just being like oh we're just friends so um but yeah I I think I reacted more to Oblivio just because it was like, we ha- we must be dating. Yes, we are. Like, versus <laughs> like, Adrian's only being interested in Marinette because he finds out she's Ladybug. Well, we also, the thing was, this was kind of like at the end. Like, this was like, yeah. boom, they're together. And then we kind of watched them kind of quote unquote get together in Oblivio, which I always think is more compelling than like, oh, they're dating. Yeah. Which is why I'm never going to ship all you Nino. <laughs> Sorry, Matt, I can't ship that. <laughs> exactly. um, yeah, I, Oblivio, we just spend a lot more time with them. I feel like that's the key factor. Um, well, also in here, like, the way they, like, preface everything and you watch, like, you know something horrible also is know going it, to yeah, happen. You, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's more dark. That's the um, thing, because, like, I'm the whole time, like, Marinette's going to die. Marinette's going to die. And I was like, oh, he killed everybody. <laughs> right. yeah. 
Um, yeah, so I think I think Oblivio is like more romantic. This we don't. I feel like we just don't get enough of it. Um, but at the same time, it feels more real because this is like a version of what we've been hoping to see at some point. Whereas Oblivio is just like an alternate reality or something. Um, well, this but, was real. Like that was the thing. Like these were this did happen. Yeah, like yeah. this happened, and then Marinette had to fix it. Yeah, just sad. Um, yeah, so we'll, ne- we'll never get it. We'll always just have to Miraculous Ladybug back to the status quo. Yep. But Miraculous Ladybugging wasn't enough. We had to go back in time and then Miraculous Ladybug to fix everything this time. Um, True. Yeah. This is yep. Double Miraculous Ladybug. Okay. And then um, going through Bunnix's flashbacks, um, we talked about them dating. And then uh, here comes Gabriel on an iPad. And uh, he says, uh, Marinette, you got to break up with Adrian. And... <laughs> that was my favorite part. <laughs> no, my favorite is when he couldn't bother her to dad, show up in person. Her dad is like, "Don't ever step foot in my bakery again." It's like, <laughs> what? And then I forgot that Natalie's there holding the iPad. <laughs> Amazing. I'm glad he was on the iPad. That was important detail. Uh, and then. Uh... <laughs> Marinette goes to break up with Adrian, and um, this is, turns out this is all Hawkmoth's master plan to finally akumatize Marinette. Um, Marinette Dupencheng will be my ultimate masterpiece. And uh, then Adrian transforms to stop the Akuma, and then they hug, and Natalie's... I will uh, say they got me here, because I thought what was going to happen is that Ad- this is where Adrian would get akumatized. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did. Yeah, but event, you know, you know it's coming, but not yet. And then uh, that's a good point. And Natalie tells uh, Gabriel Adrian's cat, Cat Noir, like... my own son. And then he drops the cake. Or... The miraculous will soon be mine. Okay, we'll get back to that. In a like, second. and me, oh my, like Hawkmoth. Okay, let's. We also no, we'll get back to, like... to in a second. Okay, so then. Oh my uh... God. <laughs> I know we're too eager to talk about. We gotta hold on. We gotta talk about Lady Bug and um, then uh, Lady, Lady, at some point after this, I didn't know if it was immediately after or it could have been months after. I assume it was right after Lady Bug and Cat corner Hawk Moth in the Dead Wife Garden. Um, yeah, that's the nice. place where you're gonna corner him. Yeah, I think that was a solid choice. And uh, he he says, uh, "You're I know you're Adrian, and I'm I'm your dad." And um, and then Hawk Moth like. Um, smacks adrian all the way to the eiffel tower from from the dead white yes. garden yeah. <laughs> very yeah, unclear on how that worked uh, yeah, <laughs> how close is how close <laughs> is the mansion to really the, close <laughs> he like ejects him like there's some sort of a yeah. uh, ejection device and then he like, jumps up really launched. high and smacks him um that was probably the best part of the episode um <laughs> if it, <laughs> just in, in, in a certain way um and uh yeah then he uh akumatizes cat um right up and um then they're like trying to pull at him um and he says i don't know what to do and um we get uh, my lady uh he says and in english she says my prince um back to him Aww. yeah i don't think i think he said uh something else in the french but i, I like that in the english and um the uh then yeah then that's how everything turns into the post-apocalyptic future which is with his uh super cataclysm abilities um so i guess that's most of the adrian marinette romance stuff there also there's also them fighting in the future well okay then of course at the well so in in the in the post-apocalyptic version ladybug goes to kiss him in order to get the to break the bell um yes and then at the end of the episode ladybug just goes up to him and uh puts her head on cat's Super shoulder cute. And yeah. he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Rip. Uh... <laughs> I love, I love that time travel trope. Like they do it in Harry Potter, and like it's always like, oh, we fixed everything. What are you talking about? Yeah. What? It's, it's so funny. I enjoyed it, it a lot. It's also sad. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's more melancholy, but uh, <laughs> yes. Well, thing. I don't know. It's just like it's just funny. I just think it's like not necessarily haha funny. Yeah. But... Yeah. <laughs> uh ironic um maybe i don't know something something like that yeah um yeah so i don't know obviously big marinette adrian episode um i don't know i do feel like the fact that the show is wants interested in doing episodes like this um maybe tells me that we're not we are going to end the show on the reveal or something like that we won't really ever get this as the status quo because this episode's like an excuse to explore this dynamic without having to ever do it in reality in the show. Um, so I think that's, like, possible. But at the same time, we're not really exploring it. It's just 
it was very fast in this episode, and this is mostly just like a uh, time travel, like what if scenario plays into some other things of the season with like what if they know who each other are um, and Bunnicks and stuff like that. Um, and um, yeah, and, and, and also at the same time, someone on the Discord point out that like the, this isn't necessarily how it would go in the future when they've like grown more as people. So um, I don't know. I, I'm it, it makes me more, I guess, pessimistic for future reveals and stuff um but it is i do love getting episodes like this i I think they're gonna probably do more stuff like this next season and i mean it's very ambitious like this is like like i'm really impressed that i mean they went this far yeah Yeah, it's one of the biggest episodes of the show for sure and even though we fix everything at the end i mean it got dark like real fast like real fast yeah so let's talk about the post-apocalyptic world so um just like uh chat blank like white uh, future Paris, like Eiffel Tower has been cut down. Um, I think that's the most notable. Yes. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It, I know. It's it's perfect. Like it's funny that we say <laughs> that's the most notable thing when he literally like cut the moon in half. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, I forgot so, about that. So Paris is flooded, and there's like petrified versions of everyone underwater. That I think that was maybe the most successful. Yes. Uh, like post-apocalyptic like element that they had was. Um, no disrespect to the cut down Eiffel Tower was uh, Marinette finding the version of her and of Hawk Moth um, petrified underwater. I think that was really cool. Um, but also, Cat can like his his cataclysm can just go into space, his energy ball, and uh, it shoots through the moon, very reminiscent of Ruby. And then uh, also, Delaney missed that. And then also, uh, just giant ball. She goes all the way into like the cosmos later in the episode. <laughs> and uh i don't know i thought that was maybe too silly actually it was literally about to destroy the universe also when did he, he be able to like shoot the cataclysm like a weapon also he does a uh, kamehameha with the cataclysm yeah like <laughs> when, when did he learn that who taught him that i think it's the new power because he's cop blanc like i think that's uh that's just the well, way he gave happens. him, yeah, because what he accumulates him, and he's like, you have the infinite power of destruction. Yeah, you, yeah, oh. smart move, Hawkmoth, giving him infinite really? destruction. Yeah, uh, like wow, okay. Yeah, so it's just because he's super powered, I guess. Super and then he accumulates Ladybug, and he's like, oh, unlimited lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> anime sword oh, no. every single time. Oh no, so many animes. <laughs> Anime sword, anime sword, anime yeah. sword. D- Delaney, what didn't you? What didn't you like about the future stuff? I think you mentioned that. Uh, okay, so it's just the visual, like, like, it's just because of the show, like, I don't think they executed it well visually, like, I mean, it was definitely, like, stunning to, like, to be like, wow, like, we did that, we ruined Paris, and they did, you know, like, they had the Eiffel Tower was broken at the moon, but I just, it looked, it just, it also looked silly, what, like, what parts from, look silly? Just, like, like the Paris, like, uh, rundown Paris? Yeah, just it, it. I don't know. It might. It might have just been the white. I'm not sure. Like it was just like watching it. It looked kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I. I the most. But ridiculous, it's also um, jarring. Like it's also jarring just mm-hmm. because it's the show. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, it's it worked a little better for me watching it in higher quality with the English version. The video was higher quality, but um, yeah, maybe we didn't get enough. Uh, we do see very few parts of Paris. Um, that the silly part for me was like when we go into space and stuff. But yes, that, that for was... me, it was like the tone was very successful overall. Um, with what we're going for there. Um, you know, I do think like everything they were saying and like emotionally, yes. I just thought like visually it looked kind of ridiculous. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I think I liked it. I liked the the white the white hue to everything. Um, I could I could see how it'd be jarring maybe in a bad way. Um, so what, what, do we, any other parts from the, the future part? Um, I mean, every, everything's notable here in this episode. Yeah. We could go over yeah. everything. It's good, good fight scenes. Uh, Kat says, um, uh, she wants to fix everything so they can be in love again and have a hamster. So that comes back. Um, and, um. Still don't know the hamster's name. You still don't know the name. Yeah. Uh, oh, she says, uh, time to de Cat Noir when, uh. She does the devilizing. So they added a part to the reused segment. That's how special this episode was. Wow. Um, time to devilize Cat Noir. Yeah. That <laughs> was in both the French and the English. Yeah. So it's, it's just, we make sure we get that in there. 
Um, yeah, then she goes to to kiss Cat and breaks the thing. Um, also, we, there's a we get uh, all your Rose, Julica, Mylene, Alex um, stuff, which is all very fun. I think the stuff with the unicorn is the best parts of all that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's used as like a marker of like what's in Bunnix's past versus the the past that they're experiencing. Um, I think that's fun, and um, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm I'm putting off you know talking about hockey, but I think it's time. So here's the hockey month. <laughs> Is it time? It's time. <laughs> April. It's time. <laughs> And as she rises from the sh- or <laughs> <laughs> into the light from the shadows. <laughs> okay, with I want I want to get April's reaction to Hawk Moth this episode. Without I want I I know the fa- I've heard a lot of fan reaction. April, what was your personal reaction to Hawk Moth here? Did it did he inspire anything within you? <laughs> um. So I appreciate that in this. Uh, different version of the world hawk moth is a lot more capable uh, <laughs> you think this is the alternate universe when he's actually a good villain yes <laughs> except it it like uh backfires on him obviously because he ends yeah. up as like a petrified you know he's petrified at the i say the bottom of paris because it ends <laughs> up being paris, like, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but also like like that he's he's very capable but then also like Come on now, you can't give the guy who has like destruction powers unlimited power to destroy things. Like, how do you think that's gonna work out for you? <laughs> yeah. So, um, there's that. There's that whole part of the process. Uh, I loved that. Like, of course, we were in the dead wife garden like twice, so that's really good. I love the reveal to his dad. Or to Adrian, and he's just like, I'm your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you thought it would go? Probably not, right? No, that's definitely not how. Like, I love, like, just, like, being in the dead wife garden, and then, like, Adrian's, like, or ch- chat's like, th- like, my dad's Hawk Moth, and there's my mom. Like, <laughs> just hanging out. In the- yeah, did he even know mom was dead? Ma- dead mom was in the basement? Probably not. No, and he still doesn't know. That's the other thing. It's a lot thing. for him to handle. I always forget that Adrian doesn't know that his mom's, like, dead in the basement. Yeah, because, that's important. Yeah, it's important. But they always, like, talk about, like, they're like, oh, she ran away, like a dog or something. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like. <laughs> I haven't seen my mom in, like, a year. And it's like, okay, Rip. is she alive? Is yeah, she dead? Like... <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> nope, so... she's dead in the basement. She's in the basement hanging out with some butterflies like you do. Yeah. <laughs> but it was uh it was a good a good time with Hawk Moth, so Okay. So liked good. it. Okay. Um so I I a lot of people reacting how harsh Hawk Moth is this episode. Uh so What? He... No. What do you mean no? <laughs> <laughs> he like he's like, I'm gonna break up. The only happy relationship my son has ever had. Exactly. And I'm going to traumatize his ex-girlfriend. And then when I find out my son is Hawk Moth, I'm going to emotionally manipulate him until he joins my side so that we can bring his dead mother back to life. He this sucks. Is, wow. Is so you're, are you out on Hawk Moth now, Delaney? Okay. Well, that's what I, the, what's what I wouldn't talk about with Hawk Moth was like, you know, like before, like we understand that Hawk Moth is like so single minded that he'll humanize a baby. But like. He's like stupid. Like he does stupid things that are bad, but not like I- absolutely like, okay. I mean, he did call his employee. To <laughs> like he called his employee. His employee fired him so he could kumatize it. But then, like, he obviously gave him his job back. But like this, I think, like he's going really. He goes too far. I like, like if it had j- like so he, you know, if let's say this was like real, quote unquote, and he had broken them up, I'd be like, wow. You suck. I wouldn't have been that shocked, though. But then, I mean, immediately he finds out Adrian's cat noir, and he's like, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm just going to manipulate him until he gives me his miraculous. And then we're going to murder Ladybug with infinite destruction powers. Like, bro! So, like, he... I think this... I think this is... I, granted, that was kind of the point, was, like, showing the extreme, like, what will happen if they find out each other's identities. But, like, to this extreme, Hawk Moth is... He's not just the fun, dumb villain. Like, he, like, goes straight up evil, like, 
because you know he we know his motivation and we understand we know like look he's not a bad guy like this is just the one thing he wants and but no like this is i think he went too far we went too far. Wow. How dare you not do that? But nice. I like that. That shows that he's capable of oh, being I, hey, so hey, much he more. Can be competent, that's fine. But you can't say that he's not a bad dude. That was the part I was oh, reacting to. Oh, no. He's totally a bad guy. Well, no, but that what? was the thing, April, though. don't give in to the, <laughs> being a bad no. guy. So no, awesome. no. That's what Dylan's, I don't remember what Dylan said specifically. And you were like, no. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's so, what I was reacting. I feel like the I, I love that point of like this is the extreme version of Hawkmoth. Like everyone yeah. that's so indignant over Hawkmoth, like this is just supposed to show him at his most extreme. Like, this isn't how he yeah. normally is. You know, like, yeah. I feel like we got extreme Chloe in the. Oh, I guess we can't talk about that. Um, so we can. Uh, <laughs> Good you job, know, Dylan. We get extreme Thanks, Lila. All, we get extreme Lila all the time. Uh, so she, <laughs> this. Daddy, is, <laughs> she was still not in. Still not in the end of the show season, but uh, that's okay. Um, I don't know if that's a spoiler too, but uh, whatever. It's it's. It is. I'm spoiled now. Okay. Oh, shut spoiled. up. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think the main thing is like this isn't how I expected Hawkmoth to react to uh, to his own learning his son is cat. Yeah, that um, was the thing. That that was the, I think the most shocking part of the episode for me was that that's not how he reacted. He must have been really worked up that day because like yeah. he's, he's like he's he's reacted strong. Like we've seen in past episodes, uh, like. Gorzilla comes to mind is like push comes to shove his love for his son is there um even when tied to uh, his motivation as hawk moth um so this episode kind of goes against it when he learns that adrian's cat he's like oh all the better to akumatize him with like um and then yeah. he goes hard into yeah. that um he you know manipulates the situation with revealing the identities to i feel like that's like the most sinister thing to me is that was his reaction everything after this is like enough in line with what he normally does to me that i wasn't like enraged with any of it like it is that it's extreme but like okay he's he's getting um revealing the truth to adrian and then um he like throws the akuma at him like right in front of him i do buy that he'd akumatize his own son um i feel like people are underrating the what akumatizing babies means like like Like, I do, I this. do believe that he would akumatize his son. This that that part, makes sense to me, yeah. Yeah, but I do. That's the thing, though. Like the whole like the manipulation and then the like throwing everything in his face. I was like, whoa. It's it comes across really harsh. Um, I I mean, I think you could argue like I don't know, like it, it, it's certainly manipulating him, but it's also like. Uh, I don't know if it's like this ma- it's 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 he's revealing think, truth to him. I don't think he's is he ever trying to hurt him? Like I guess that's a question. Um Well, yeah, that's the thing. Well, he I mean, he it is hard. I mean, he he makes it that's the kind of I mean, this kind of goes back to the issue with the episode like they're not having enough room to breathe because like all of this yeah, happens really so fast. fast. Yeah. yeah. And like like Hawkmoth barely processes that Adrian's like is Cat Noir and then Adrian finds out his dad is Hogmoth and that his mom might not be dead at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, and like, that's like, uh, it, it all happens at once because it's supposed to be like in a digestible package for the part in the episode that it's in. Um, like, like, that's why you do all that at the same time. I do, I do think even at his most extreme, like, he's not trying to right. hurt him. He's I trying to, cool. he's trying to get him to help him to the point of right. getting Emily back. But like it's he knows akumatizing him is ultimately not going to hurt him. Well, well, but I do think there though the infinite destruction like he miscalculated that what that would what that would cause. Yeah. 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 So in that instance, I don't think he's blameless because you know again we talked about this in well, Shira yeah, too yeah. like you know the intentions versus like what happens like no I don't think Adrian that Gabriel wants to hurt Adrian or like I mean he ultimately that's the only thing he cares about is his son. I mean, yeah, that this episode yeah. maybe shows the priorities flips from maybe what we yeah. thought they were before. Well, yeah, no, I think this would demonstrate that, you know, he cares, he might care more about bringing Emily back than protecting his son. Yeah, at least on this day in this universe. <laughs> well, oh, ooh, oh, April. Oh, what? Oh, she said, <laughs> April. Oh, April. This is... Uh... <laughs> this is a good wrinkle because he, is he really gonna maybe that's why he's so harsh to adrian because he's just a scent a monster what yeah, a brilliant maybe. idea well also <laughs> there is he does break them up like and that obviously hurts adrian and like he doesn't care yeah but like he does stuff like that to adrian all the time it's true. Though. Yeah, it's he true and he knows like he has to know that 
you know, it upsets Adrian. And that, so I can't, it, sometimes it's really hard for our, me to, like, whenever he's like, I, like, I'm doing this for my son. I love my son so much. And I'm like, yeah, mm, yeah but do you, though? Because, like, like, this is, like, a very extreme, like, case. Well, of, I think like, he, loves him. he loves him in his, like, little twisted way. Maybe, but like I like at like the no end one's of the gonna day, argue and say Gabriel Agreste is a great parent because he's oh not. no, <laughs> oh, sucks. Would, no. Yeah. Well, okay. Here's my theory now. <laughs> Pop Rob isn't a good dad or a good or well, I say he's, he's not good really villain. good at anything. Maybe yeah, he's a good designer. Thing. I don't he know. Is but he is a good really villain, but he's not good at being a villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's my April. You made a mistake bringing up those cinnamon monsters, and that's all I'm thinking about. So yeah, that's here's, it. here's the here, like maybe the difference between this and Gorzilla. Um, is that if Adrian's a Zenta monster in Gorzilla, it's like a split second reaction to him, like seeing a, a, what looks like his son plummeting down. He's reacting to like, oh, Adrian. And so he tries to save him versus this. He knows he's not like emotionally reacting. He knows this isn't his son. So he's just using the Zenta monster as part of his manipulation. And he doesn't feel bad about it because it's not his son. Um, well, so I think well, that might make sense. Well, also the whole like, this is his moment. Because the thing was, if we talk about how fast everything was and like, so, Hawk Moth, you know, he's always about his big plan that never works. So, this big plan was Marinette. Well, that it gets ruined immediately. But then, an even better plan shows up. And he's like, I'm all about this plan. And that would make sense to me. Like, he would do anything to, like, execute He does get plan. really worked up yeah. over seeing seeing the path. Like, uh, yes. yeah, I think that makes sense with what we've seen before. The path to, like, actually getting what he wants. Um, I guess, like, to a concluding question about Hawk Moth is, um, does this hurt him? Like, we love Hawk Moth as, like, kind of, like, this lovable, dopey, but still sinister enough villain. This is, like, a pretty harsh version of Hawk Moth. Does this, like, ruin our image of him? Like, can we not, like, find him lovable anymore? I don't know. It's hard, because, like, this is, like, this happened, but it didn't. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So, I don't know. Like, and also, again, that's also, we were talking about, this is one situation where they find out. This is but like and a we very also extreme situation. Yes, and too. it's supposed to be an extreme circumstance. I think. And, the sh- and Hawk ahead. Moth, has, I mean, he's come close before with Adrian's ring. Like he's noticed before. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We had that whole thing, and this this episode clarifies that he does not know. Uh, if that was yes. in question, uh, he does not know Adrian. So for a real while, <laughs> we thought he did. Um, yeah. I think the show is underestimating uh, at a high level. What happens when you put characters in unlikable situations um, and the reaction fans will have to that? Uh, I think with Chloe, uh, you know, okay, skip ahead a minute if you haven't watched the finale. Um, Okay, so people are reacting pretty negatively to Chloe. Like, I think in the writer's minds, it's like, okay, we're just, you know, Chloe's evil now and that's how she's, and, you know, like, it's, it's, but these are damn, really damaging things to uh, the fans' perceptions of characters that are happening. And I think the show doesn't uh, really understand that enough. Um, Well, they also, I feel like this is really similar to the finale stuff. Well, they didn't put any effort into, like, the Chloe thing. Like, no effort. Um... Yeah. yeah, there's not a, not a lot of build up, and in this episode there wasn't a lot of build up either. Um, to, well, it's to not even just the episode; it's the season, like the whole series. Like we've had, you know, there's always little blips of hope. Yeah, and and then on the other end, there's this uh, Lila character who uh, um, disappears. No blips, of, no blips of hope. So it's it's right. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I think tracking how the show handles its its more negatively presented characters. I want to see how how that goes into next season. Um, people also mad at Natalie. Um, Natalie, very complicit in everything that's happening. Um, <laughs> for snitching. <laughs> she, really, all she does is say, your son's cat noir. Um, but she, I guess she's I, like, uh, there. It seemed like she, time. she wasn't sure at first if she was going to tell him. Like, she seemed to hesitate. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I don't know why anyone's surprised. Like, at this point, clearly she's loyal to Gabriel 100%. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Oh, like, yeah. Greenwich, we I do understand the reaction in that like she is shown to be very kind to Adrian, but I think that's gone. Like that ship sailed because she is so like about the plan. Like she is like so far like with Gabriel that I don't think it'll like it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, I mean with Gabriel it's like there's a question of if Adrian or making his wish came first. With Natalie, we know she is first uh, to to Gabriel. I th- I feel like that's not a surprise. Yeah. 
So it's I don't not. Know. I mean, yeah. So like, you know, that she's getting pushed in the wrong direction. It's still her fault because she shouldn't be following this person. But right. um, yeah, you know. why was she like following him like that anyway? That's just. He's not even cute, Natalie. Love makes you do crazy things. Does yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> that's what the that's what the show would say. I don't know. Well, um, that is exactly what this episode's about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of that's a good sign. Okay. Um, and again, if I think uh, this episode might look different if Adrian's son's a monster. Okay. So what what, what else haven't we talked about here? Um, I, I like at the end. It's the uh, okay. So let's talk about the end of the episode. So she's. Um, She's uh, not supposed to know, uh, so she can't miraculously debug, and she she has the eraser, and she's like, oh, I have to erase the past, not here, and then she hugs Cat and leaves, and then, um, uh, most confusing part of the episode for me, there's, like, with Bunnix, she's, like, speculating with this chalkboard background style thing, how Adrian knew, and she, like, knows how Adrian knew, and then it's like, oh, Adrian told someone else and spread it around, um... I was, like, really confused what that meant. I think, like, this is Bunnix knows that it involves Hawkmoth, and she can't know that, so she's, this is, like, you know, the, right? Um, right. Like, this is, like right. yeah, like, the Marinette doesn't know the details, so it's like, oh, she's speculating about what happened, but she doesn't know what happens. That's what it's showing us. Um, that That's the the one moment that got, like, a little bit too confusing with all this timeline stuff. Um, and, uh, oh, yeah, like, Bunnix getting the unicorn back, and... Um, and Ladybugs, uh, it goes back to the moment, erases the thing, and then says, uh, oh, Adrian, your Brazilian fan club sent you the gift. Um. I like how this is her solution, not what if I just give him the present tomorrow at school? Yeah. That can't be. Can't have that. That would. Uh, I hate her. <laughs> can't have that. Um, <laughs> yeah, the sh- like the shout out to the Brazilian fans <laughs> uh, <laughs> with that. And also, it's his fifth name day. Like, uh, um, and uh, we had uh, Marinette snooping in his room with all his stuff, sniffing his pillow. A lot of uh, intense, <laughs> intense Marinette feelings here. Um, that was uh, you. Get, I, season three, we talked about this, I think, in the beginning, but this season is threw back a little bit to more of season one Marinette. But I think they mostly controlled it this season. Like, this is uh, there weren't that many of these types of moments. Um, and, uh, then it's like, yeah, Bunnix knows, she knows everything. Um, yeah. Okay. Will that come okay. into play? Probably not. Um, nope. and, uh, then this ending scene of, uh, cats like singing and Ladybug goes up to him and, uh, puts that right on her shoulder. Um, and I'm, I'm looking through, see anything else. With By the way, there's a seat. Uh, I forget about it, but in the beginning of the episode, Gabriel's just talking to dead wife, um, yep. saying, like, I'm going to bring you back. Yeah. Just saying mysterious, dark things, you know. <laughs> she they... can't hear you. She's in a coffin. <laughs> Do but, we you know, know that? The, what they Do say is that coma, coma patients, uh, they can hear everything you're saying, right? Don't you know about it? That's uh, what people say. But it's is she a... dead or in a coma? <laughs> No. Not dead, not dead, not dead. Yeah, I would say she's not dead unless he's just preserving her, which is even creepier than it was before. Okay, we're going to some new theory that he's preserving her. Um, I think we hit on everything. Um, oh, Bunnix is, uh, what about Bunnix's burrow? Um, it's bigger, it's bigger on the inside, Delaney. The TARDIS, yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, TARDIS. I like, I like the two flashes of, oh, here's dinosaurs and then here's like Neo Future Paris. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. Um, I, and uh yeah I, I think i think we mostly we mostly got it now so delaney um i don't know what's uh wh- where are you at now <laughs> after this episode of ladybug what are you looking for we get one more episode this season oh i i think felix is gonna irritate me so it doesn't matter do you know anything about it i know that i know who felix is but that's it okay i don't know who felix is um it's uh in the pilot uh cat was felix right like so um yeah okay we'll we'll we'll, we'll find out uh april what, what what are you feeling after this big episode of ladybug mean, we had this episode and it existed i feel like i'm less high on it now um i don't know it's hard to talk about too like we're just uh jumping around and yeah well it. but to be fair the episode sort of jumps around too and yeah. it it, it it does feel hard to keep track of at times where you you are in the episode. So, I mean, it's still not a bad episode, but I um, if, if we're just gonna continue to like be trolled, I'm gonna get 
I'm going to get really agitated. have to start akumatizing people. Oh, no. I didn't know you had those powers. <laughs> Shh. No one does. <laughs> wow. It's the future. This future as uh, April got the, the miraculous from Hawkmoth. Oh, wow. Yep. I stole it from him. <laughs> probably not hard, honestly. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> Um, looking at my list, see if there's anything, my notes, see if there's anything, um, it's, uh, people saying this is like maybe a turning point in Ladybug's view of Cat. Um, like she's going to be a lot more affectionate towards Cat. Now, not that she ever knew he was Adrian, but this is like a very, um, sympathizing episode towards Cat for Ladybug in certain ways in the real reality. And she, well, at the she end, almost Le- lost him. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, that's a big deal. And le- leans her head on his shoulder at the end. So, um, you know, m- maybe this is uh, moving forward. And maybe we saw it in, in the episode Ladybug or some other ones. Maybe she's um, going to be less, less biting with him now and more affectionate. That'd be Actually. nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he, he could be less, uh, Less puns annoying. and less annoying. That would be good. Too. <laughs> be good. Maybe they can just start dating. That would be the solution. I yeah, think. I agree. It's not going to happen, but I agree. <laughs> yeah, dated this episode. Why can't they date in season four? I don't know. Like because... I, what I like about this episode is that like it's so ambitious, and I think I would love if we had more episodes like this. But it's also annoying because like we can't have serialization with stuff this good. Yeah, I think that's yeah. always kind of the the drawback. Um, is like. Uh, this is really good. I'd love to build on this, but we're not really building on it. Right. Um, it's, just it will ne- yeah. it's just here and just happened. We're just yeah, hitting I, a giant reset button and going back. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, this show is going to be like Rick and Morty and start uh, commenting on how it's resetting every episode. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you um, say that, Dylan, but... <laughs> we could. We had yeah, done I, this in... Not just one episode, but like two. So, yeah, I, I, I do. Despite maybe pointing out a lot of um, flaws and stuff, I think this is really good. I there's a lot of parts I really like. I love how ambitious it is. I, I do think like Ladybug feels very constrained in its runtime sometimes. Um, and uh, not that that was necessarily the issue, but certain things I think should have been maybe drawn out a little bit more to draw an emotional connection to, as I talked about. Um, but um, I don't know. I mean, this is going to be one of the episodes of the season you remember, right? Looking back. And, oh, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. And, I, and I, I'd prefer to keep doing things like this. So I, I think that's good. Um, and uh, maybe we'll build on this to some romance stuff next season. Maybe. 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 Okay. Well, this is interesting considering, like, the finale. So, like, I don't know. Yeah. So um, that's true. Maybe we're not building, <laughs> but you know, well, who who knows? Uh, that's the thing. Next season, if it's also not serialized, you could get uh, you get non romance episodes, romance episodes, right? Like uh, it, maybe, maybe we can do even more of this without moving more serialization. I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to see it still. I feel like I feel like we still have to to have more of a. Uh, running story to do anything significant but the fact that the, the i mean season three certainly has shown they can do big things in their constrained format um and i think this episode's a big example so there you go um any other final thoughts on chat blanc no i enjoyed it it was good yeah, yeah. also he, he, him being his design being white that's cool too we it was really that. cool yeah and also I like him like being it. crazy <laughs> yeah, this slightly more crazy than normal, but yeah, slightly. <laughs> this yeah, is good. Um, yeah, okay. So let us know your thought of this episode, overlyanimated dot com on YouTube comments, YouTube dot com slash overlyanimated. Um, you know, I feel like we just we need less terrible hockey in order to have more fun here. Yes. I think that's yeah. the key. <laughs> we were just too somber because he's he's uh, he's not fun, as fun in this episode. It's, uh, Do you think his blast hit the space dumpsters? Uh, yes, that's, that's okay. Delaney's bringing it. You're bringing us uh, right around right at the end of the podcast. That, that's a that's a fantastic question. Uh, oh yeah, where were the space dumpsters? <laughs> we got shots of space, and we just see space dumpsters. Like, where are they? Did that's he annihilate got, them too? Yeah, they got annihilated, but the, the white beam. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, were you thinking that earlier, Delaney, or did you just think of it now? I just now. It just occurred to me. Okay, uh, that's genius thoughts at the end of the podcast. I try. That's good. 
But... I miss face dumpsters. Yeah. I mean, come on. Like, if, if, if we were to see them, like, I don't know if they knew we'd have such a reaction, but we wouldn't it would be, refle- <laughs> it would be reflected in season five, probably, if anything. So we'll see. Like, how do you not, how do you introduce something like space dumpsters and you don't bring it up constantly? It's baffling and... to me. <laughs> yeah. It's truly Why baffling. Why wouldn't you bring up something as cool as space dumpsters all the time? Like, I want news, like, I want constant news, like, Oh, and this updates like the astronauts are emptying the space dumpsters. Like that'd be great. Why aren't we? Doing this? <laughs> Have we talked about how they empty the space dumpsters? Before? Right. Well, you know, well, and like it's no, like that and dumb it. stuff. Like the Akuma alarm. The Akuma alarm is like one of my favorite things. Yeah, ever. I get, that's that's the downside to episodes like this is you don't get the zany stuff with Ladybug. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a very different type of episode from like a Star Train or a Reverser. Yeah. Um, uh, how do they empty the space dumpsters? We're gonna circle back to that question soon. Okay, so that's a that was an amazing question. Um, I got you. Okay, <laughs> maybe one of if we'll have a do whole off season podcast just on the space dumpsters. Of maybe. Is it what April? Do they like send astronauts up there? Are there like very specific like garbage men assigned to the space dumpsters? Yeah, like, we'll, th- uh-huh. we'll start thinking about these questions. We'll these are start, important questions. Start taking notes so you can be ready for the Space Dumpster So we'll have the Space Dumpster up. podcast and the Cinta Monster podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, we could definitely fill all Cinta Monster Theory podcasts. We could definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, me, that's me every podcast now. Um, okay, talk about... Yeah, I know, uh, you've been so excited. <laughs> You say when Cinnamon Monster and Dylan's first like frothing at the mouth. It honestly made more sense to me <laughs> once it got brought up. I didn't think of it until now. <laughs> Somehow. I think we connected. We figured the episode out. So t- t- tell us on the Discord why you also believe in uh, Adrian's Ascent to Monster. That's the only opinion that I'll, that I'll see. I mean, you could stay another opinion. I'm just going to like not be able to process it. You know, because that's how I work. But um, at overlyanimated.com slash discord and um, consider supporting us via Patreon, patreon.com slash overlyanimated. Thanks to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast. Don't have one bolted down, so we're just going to go needle here. Um, Honorary. needle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that. That'll be my default choice. Um, and uh, we, we, in honor of space dumpster discussion at the end. Um, and um, thanks as well to our patron executive producers, Ryan, Steve, Ox, Beatrice, Hugh, Michael, and Needle. Um, yeah, we're as of now podcasting on Felix tomorrow. It's supposed to air in the UK, so we'll we'll be back for the summer. Calling it uh, like Needle, summer calling it the true season finale because it's airing last. Um, so. Ooh. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we. I'm gonna treat it like it's the season finale. Yeah, let's come on and just be all really shocked and like, wow, what a huge <laughs> season finale of Lady Luck. Like, yeah. <laughs> Everything <laughs> makes sense now. It really tied the whole season together. <laughs> what if it does though? What if? Oh my what god. If, what if this is the Adrian's Ascent to Monster reveal episode? You know. Please. What if we... <laughs> I assume not. Okay, so <laughs> that's it. We'll see you, Felix. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.